From a troubled Jeans West employee, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. to a man who gets by with a little help from his friends. What am I gonna do now that you're gone, Biggie? <laughs> Shit, sell a lot of motherfucking CDs, that's what. I'm missing you work. It seems Puffy Combs is on top of the world looking down on creation, and the only explanation he can find is he's butt ass lucky. His story is next on Behind the Music That Sucks. <laughs> Not much is known of Sean Puffy Combs before he and his brother Willis were adopted by a cosmopolitan white man. But signs of his impending fame and fortune were everywhere. Everyone saw that I had the potential to be the baddest motherfucker in all time hip hop at a very young age. I remember you would put on Diana Ross records and try to sing over them. He never knew the words. It was then that Mr. Drummond knew Puffy was special. I thought he was retarded! special enough to send little Puffy to a very special school where he thrived and the staff encouraged his unique talents. That boy? Shit, he was funny. He put on a record and he would just rock back and forth mumbling, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. But the minute the staff turned off the record, Puffy would react in a violent rage, smacking his forehead and screaming, five minutes to Wapner. My tatter cannot be contained or controlled. I'm the man. It was then that his father realized that Puffy was destined for stardom. That kid was crazy! Puffy's caring father realized the only thing he could do is set that talent free. On the streets, Puffy found the break he was looking for by meeting crack dealer Biggie Smalls in East New York. The two became inseparable friends and learned that both had a passion for music. That passion would take them all the way to the top. Karaoke was starting to sweep the American pop culture landscape and served as fertile ground for young emerging talents. Biggie and Puffy immersed themselves in the burgeoning scene and found themselves gaining respect from that community. Tucker Leibowitz, known in the industry as Mother Tucker, caught Biggie and Puffy's act and signed them on the spot. I was high on crack. Puffy's star was on the rise. I'm still high on crack. The worst was yet to come. Puffy learned that his stepsister Kimberly was caught holding up a dry cleaning store in Fresno. She pleaded for help from her brother on the rise. Fuck that crack a bit. That week his brother Willis was caught sipping wheatgrass at a dairy in Connecticut juice bar and was promptly arrested. Man, I thought that brother was a straight up fucking cracker. Puffy retreated from the pain and poured himself into other people's music. <laughs> he was all up in my face saying, I gotta be in your video. The next day, Puffy was featured in Biggie's first big music video. His eclectic style of bobbing his head and standing around gained major attention from the critics. That's when I finally got my motherfucking respect. Realizing his ticket to fame, Puffy started standing around in other people's videos, sometimes varying the act by moving his arms. But stardom, he would find, was not all the crack he thought it would be. Tragically, his friend and partner was struck down by a drive-by fruiting. I think he was allergic to fruit. Did you ever say that he any fruit? No. Puffy was devastated. Cha-ching! Found a way to express his pain once again through other people's music. Cha-ching! He dedicated the police classic, I'll Be Missing a Little Jew, to his departed pal and won the hearts and the dollars of music fans around the globe. Tragedy, like a stroke victim, has a way of making you learn as much as you've lost. And Puffy has learned a lot and often thinks about his incarcerated family members and the memory of his departed friend, Biggie Smalls. Cha-ching! But the world waits to see what else this superstar will learn and what he might teach, what other triumphs he might avail, whether he will ever discover that Puffy Combs sucks ass.